What's going on? Hope everyone is doing incredibly well today. Super excited to be here with you. We are about to go down and crush it together with a new, brand new live training, how to close one to $10,000 minimum in the next week. If you're here with me, if you're ready, if you're excited, let me know, throw a W in the comments below. I don't do L for live because that's not what we are. We are winners. Throw a W in the comments below. Let me know you are here with me. I've got your questions. I'm going to crush this for you. I've got a lot to share with you. Amazing value coming your way. Not asking you to do anything other than hear me and actually take action with this. That's what we're here to do. That's my goal here today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is give everyone the chance to come on in here, take a couple minutes, uh, get everything ready. Um, if you have any questions on the front end about prospecting, about anything I'm bringing to the table right now, throw it down in the comments below. I will definitely be having time for Q&A for you specifically to help you out with this process. Very excited to have you here uh, with me. Uh, excited that Andrew's given me this platform to provide for you. I promise you guys I will not be letting you down. The fire is coming. You have to be ready and willing and able to listen and implement. Believe what I'm about to bring to the table here because I'm super excited about it. Uh, give everyone a couple more minutes here. We're gonna get everyone in. And again, if you have any questions, let me know uh, what you're dealing with or, or what you want uh, me to cover here uh, down below. Uh, again, if you're watching live, throw a W in the comments below. Feel free to let us know where you're watching from. I'm here in Tampa, Florida. Uh, today, again, we're gonna do a uh, live training on how to close one to $10,000 a month minimum in the next uh, week. Then we're going to talk about the simplest method to land a new client in the next five days. Uh, and I'm gonna even show you how to automate it. Then we're going to show you how to close out 2018 with immense momentum. And then we're gonna scale your company to $10,000 in recurring revenue. And then I'm gonna show you how to get off the freelancer's trap or the freelancer's treadmill, if you wanna say. I'm gonna show you how to break that cycle of information overload, shiny object syndrome, lack of clarity. And I'm gonna show you how to start scaling your business now by implementing a yellow brick road. So if you wanna close more business before year's end, stick around, let's make this the best couple of months we have as we move into 2019 with major momentum. Hope everyone is doing well. So glad to have you all here today. Again, if you have any questions, throw it below. I'm gonna get started here in exactly one minute. Um, and if you're watching with us live, throw a W in the comments below. Uh, and I'm gonna ask you one other thing. I'm big on uh, the number seven, that's my lucky number. If you guys enjoy anything during this training, during this live, if you resonate with something, throw a seven in the comments below. Let me know you're enjoying it. Let me know you're here with me. This should be interactive. I don't wanna just be preaching or lecturing to you. I have a lot to share, but I'm here to help you guys out. We've got a great uh, audience right now, so we're gonna get started here. If you're joining us late, no worries. We're about to get started. Let's take, let's take the uh, first, uh, dive in. Now, what I want to do here is I want to first show up and be real with you. I want to acknowledge that all of you are trying methodologies and implementation and you've invested and you've put in work, but ultimately you're struggling in some way to generate the right revenue, the right type of leads, the right type of clients. And I'm going to tell you why. I'm going to tell you why right up front. You are the obstacle right now in this business, meaning you are wearing all the hats, you are doing too many things. You're investing in too many courses, you are not getting proper mentorship or guidance, and you're throwing things on a dartboard or on the wall and hoping that it's gonna stick. If you are not properly tracking or taking productivity into account or looking at opportunities in your niche and specializing and honing in on what your craft can be, you're missing out on what really you can do in this company and in this business. So I'm gonna ask you something today. I'm gonna ask you today to make a commitment to yourself to no longer be a freelancer, and to start being a business owner. What that's going to require is that you listen here today, but you don't let it go in one ear and out the other. You actually implement what I'm bringing to the table. I'm not gonna hold anything back. I'm gonna give you exactly what people pay me thousands of dollars to do. I'm gonna give it to you right now because as someone that cares about the group here and someone that's a good friend of Andrew that we are purpose-driven and impact-driven entrepreneurs, I know if you listen to this process, all of you will be sharing your big wins right in this group. So please, hear me out, listen to this process and implement. We are no longer gonna be freelancers, we are going to be business owners. Now, I also wanna start with this. I don't like when someone makes a post about, hey, these are the three things we cover, and then we don't cover it. So I'm gonna cover those three things right off the top first, then we're gonna do some Q&A. I asked several of you uh, on the original post if you had any questions, we had several here. If you have any questions now, please feel free to put it in the uh, comments below. I promise you, I will cover it for you. I'm here to serve you and here to help you, all right? Let's talk about the simplest method to land a new client in five days, okay? Now I'm gonna break down 
four specific things here. Let's start with number one, and that's your current clients. Now, obviously, if you don't have clients, wait a couple minutes here. Let me talk to the people that do. If you have current clients right now, there's a very, very good chance of two things. One, you can upsell them to provide them more value and create more impact in their business for you and for them. And number two, there's a very good chance you can get a referral from them based on your work with them. Don't forget this knowledge, do not forget this process. It's critical to understand that your current clients are most likely the best opportunity to create new revenue right now. I'm gonna give you a quick metaphor here. Have you ever done this one? Hey babe, where's my phone? It's in your hand, right? It's in your hand. A lot of the times as entrepreneurs, we have blinders on because we're so focused on, I need to make new money, I need to go create opportunity, I need to go reach out to more people and you forget what's right in your lap, what's right in front of your face. Your clients have amazing opportunity for growth in your business and in theirs. So let me give you some tactical implementation to do, all right? Follow me here. And again, this is gonna be on replay, so either listen, write some notes, or come back and watch the replay when you find uh, the value that you need, okay? Let's start here with the current clients. What do we do? I want you to get on calls with them, on a reporting call, and I want you to ask them for three things. This is your process. You're either looking for a sale or upsell. In this case, it would be an upsell. You're looking for feedback, and you're looking for a referral or testimonial. Let me give you some feedback on how to do this, okay? This is the process. Get on a call, you say, hey listen, we wanna make sure our client's customer journey and experience is nothing but exemplary working with our company. Now it's really important that we hear from our clients what they believe is working really well and things that we can potentially improve on so that we are giving you the best service possible. So with that being said, I wanted to get on this call today and review some of your results from the last week or month or whatever get them buttered up a little bit, and then you go back to that process of the frame of the call, and you say, well now that you know what we've been doing, I'd love to hear from you. What is the best thing about working, in my example, with prospecting on demand? What's the best thing, right? Now, someone might come back to you and say, you know what the best thing is working with you? You guys are just amazing at communication and the results you get are surefire. Hey, thank you so much, Sandra, for saying that. I really appreciate it. Would you mind if I use that in a testimonial? She says, absolutely, great. You can also ask right then or there for a, uh, a uh, referral, but I'd wait because I prefer to do this. Well, Sandra, I really appreciate the, uh, the nice comments, but we always want to make sure that we can improve. We believe in 1% improvement every single day minimum. That's our goal. So what would you say we could potentially improve for you? Now, two things will happen. One, they'll either say nothing, you're amazing, which is great. Or two, they might tell you something that's going to actually allow you to make an upsell. For example, they might say, you know, I love that you guys provide SEO and PPC, but it would be so great if we can have some help on the content side. I don't know if you guys do that. Ding, 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 ding. Offer, money, right in front of your face. Now, the other opportunity of that is they might tell you not one of those two things, meaning everything is great or we need another offer from you. They might actually tell you, hey, listen, you guys are absolutely fantastic. So much so in fact that I couldn't tell you one thing that you can improve except, because that's very common, right? Except X, Y, and Z. And that X, Y, and Z that they tell you is something that now you can improve to retain your clients longer. Does everyone understand where I'm coming from with this process? If so, throw a seven in the comments below. Let me know this is making sense with you. All right, what's up, Jerry? What's up, Andrew? Tasha, there's a lot of you on here. I, I can't call you all out, but it's great to see you guys. Uh, hope you're loving it. Um, let me know uh, if that resonates with you. If you think you can do that, if you have any questions about it, let me know as well. Um, and we're gonna continue here uh, to, the next, uh, to the next piece, all right? The next piece is your previous leads. All right, so your first one, the easiest way to land a new client in the next five days is your current clients. After that is your previous leads, okay? How do we create new revenue with previous leads? Consider the idea of going for no. In my business, when I teach the entrepreneurs I work with, I'm very, very, very adamant about there's only two decisions to make on every sales call, a yes or a no. The biggest problem that most entrepreneurs have is they allow people to stay on the fence on that maybe, right? Lots of maybes in this marketplace, a lot. Like, oh yeah, I love that strategy, David. Um, you know, let me go talk to my wife or my partner about it. Send me a proposal. Like, no one wants to make decisions on, on the call, right? The reality is people suck at making decisions. Not just entrepreneurs, people in general are just not good at making decisions. Force them to make a decision. So with your previous leads, they've either been a maybe at some point or they strictly said no to you because they're not clients, right? So the people that you spoke to in the last 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and a little bit later could be 120, but I prefer you keep from the 90 and earlier. Within those days, if you know the three qualifiers on sales, then you can go back to them 
and see if they're in the same spot. Now, if you don't know these three qualifiers for sales, I'm about to change your life. So really hone in on this, please, all right? The only thing you need to know for sales is as follows. Where are you now? Where do you wanna be? What's the obstacle holding you back? Now, you don't ask those questions directly. You ask indirect questions related to those three. And once you have enough intel on your sales call, you reconfirm those three things. They tell you if that's correct. Now you're ready to sell. Someone asked me, by the way, uh, in the post, like, how do we convert to it from value to sale? This is exactly how you do it. Let me give you an example, okay? Let's talk about Chelsea, for example. Chelsea owns a gym. So I'd say, Chelsea, right now, you told me that you have 20 gym members, all right? You'd like to get to 50 before year's end, and the obstacle holding you back is that you and your husband don't have enough time to learn the marketing strategies required to get those 30 customers because you're so busy working with the 20 and you're trying to hire people to get to the 50 and you don't have a, a, the opportunity to do so. Did I get that right? She'll say, absolutely, right? Now, if you make an offer to Chelsea in that day and she still says, yeah, you know, I'm gonna try it myself with my husband, right? Because that's gonna happen. But then you follow up in 30 days and she says, well, Chelsea, when we started 30 days ago, you were 20 members, you wanted to be at 50, and the obstacle was X, Y, and Z. Where are you at now? Oh, the same spot. Well, look, 30 days ago, we should have started. But the reality is, I understood that you wanted to take this on your own first and give it, a, give it the good old college try. But the reality is now, we can no longer wait. You wanted a goal to have to happen before the year's end, now's the time to take action. Because if we wait any longer, I'm gonna reach out to you in 60 days, and in 90 days, and we're gonna be in the same spot, unfortunately. Take this opportunity, let me help you, let me impact yourself and your business, and we'll grow together. Your previous leads, that's the second easiest way to generate clients. Let me know, guys, if this is making sense for you. Uh, again, throw a seven in the comments below. Uh, if you have any questions about this, I'm here for you, here to support you on this process. Hope you're enjoying this, all right? The third method, and the and arguably the easiest method, is your personal network your personal network. Now, when was the last time you posted on Facebook and just let everyone know that's friends with you, that you work in a certain area of, uh, of specialization and you can help this certain area and ask if anyone knows anyone that could, could work with you. There's amazing connections happening every single day on Facebook, it's unbelievable. If you go on Facebook, think of this, okay? If you go on Facebook and you post, hey guys, I'm looking for a chiropractor, I hurt my back, does anyone have any recommendations? How many people do you think would on average answer you? I guess probably anywhere from three at the low end to 10 to 20 at the high end. How is that any different than if you make a post and say, hey guys, I run a marketing agency and I'm trying to help chiropractors grow their company. I'm struggling to find the right chiropractors because I'm so busy working on creating the best system for them. Do any of you know any chiropractors that I can help? Do any personal recommendations you would make? Why wouldn't they still answer you? What changes between, hey, I'm in pain and need help versus, hey, I'm in pain metaphorically because my business is struggling and I need help, give me leads. There's no difference. There's no difference. Do you know what the difference is? Your mindset. Your mindset. You're gonna come up right now in your head and you're gonna tell me, yeah, Alex, whatever, I don't wanna post on Facebook because I don't wanna be vulnerable that people are gonna see that I need help getting clients. What? Really? Are you making that run around in your head right now? Don't do this to yourself. Don't make this harder than it needs to be. Enjoy this process. Be open, be vulnerable, be transparent, help people, create impact, care more. Don't be afraid, just do it. Just take the action. So post it on Facebook, see what happens from it. Maybe nothing comes of it, but maybe something does. Maybe something does. I say this to my clients a lot. I say, there's a hundred reasons not to do it, right? hundred reasons in your head not to do it. Find the one reason too. Is it that you need to provide for your kid? You have to pay rent this month? You desperately want to go to that game next week? What is it? What's the one reason for you to take action on this? Do it, all right? The other methods in your personal network are as follows. You can also send a text out. This is what I call the POD text challenge. Basically just a message out to your community of people that you know on your phone uh, about what you do, just an update, um, wishing them well and seeing if there's any way uh, you can work with them. But the best thing to do is offer a referral bonus, like $500 or something if they send you a lead. Um, very valuable. Obviously only pay them if you close the client, of course. And then the final method is local meetups. You'd be surprised in your area how many local meetups there are for entrepreneurs and business owners at the Chamber of Commerce, at BNI uh, and on meetup.com, get out there, be yourself, be a business owner, shake hands, get excited. Now, I know this is not what you want to do, but you're asking me here, what's the simplest method? Going to an event, shaking someone's hand, creating rapport. It's easy. Do that. This makes sense to everyone, okay? So I'm going to recap those three because the next one is about new outreach. 
So the three that I just broke down were current clients, your previous leads, and your personal network. If anyone has any questions about those, let me know uh, below, um, but I just wanna make sure. Jerry asked, is there an app that works well for the text from your phone? Uh, like, a, like a text blast one? I wouldn't do that because it comes out like, it it, usually in those text blast ones, it will break up the message and it looks weird. Um, I would just do it manually, Jerry. Send it to 10, 20 people. Okay, ooh, Richard with a 7.5. Richard on the next level, love it. Okay, seeing a lot of sevens here, appreciate you guys. Awesome, 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 awesome. All right, we're gonna keep going here. Uh, I've got more to share uh, on this process. We're gonna talk about now um, the easiest way to get new clients for brand new outreach. Please hear me out, listen very closely here. This is super important, all right? First of all, number one, know the biggest pain point and for one specific niche, that's the first key meaning you need to know the avatar and you need to be specialized. I'm not gonna get into a whole conversation now about why it's important to know the avatar and why it's important to specialize. It's either at this point that you trust I know what I'm talking about or you're unwilling to do it, in which case, no, no worries, hop off and all good. But seriously, if you're serious about this, you need to know and have a specific niche, know their pain, and have a specific offer for them. So the biggest pain in a specific niche. So for example, most of the biggest pains our time and financial freedom is not there for the business owner. That's the most common. For example, that's everyone's problem here probably, right? You don't have time and financial freedom. That could basically be the baseline pain point for every company. Try to make the pain point related specifically to that niche. So if it's for gyms, it's that they don't have enough new gym members consistently or they're struggling with retention of their gym members, right? Or they're using direct mail only and can't figure out how to use Facebook ads so they don't have enough gym members. Know the specific pain for that specific niche. Number two is find a solution for that pain. This answers the question that all of you are gonna, no matter what, ask, which is, well, Alex, how, how do I get new clients if I don't have uh, case studies, right? How do I get new clients if I don't have case studies or I'm not confident or I feel like an imposter? This is how. You find the solution for the pain before you go out there and take action on it and make sure it's profitable. How do you do this? Look up white label agencies, post in large groups like this about fulfillment partners, create a couple relationships, get some case studies, and boom, there you are, done. Now, normally this would take, in my opinion, about one hour of pre-work, like finding a couple companies online that you could research, and then making a post on like a group, and then you have to have some conversation. So it maybe would take two, three days to get it really locked in, um, but overall, just at least start the process to finding a solution, a fulfillment partner, okay? Number three, now it's time to dig deeper into the avatar. This is the first and third step. You gotta dive deeper into the avatar. Do a, at least 30 minutes of market research uh, on the niche. Now, here's what I recommend for market research as follows. Look at other agencies in the niche. See how they position their services, the copy they're using. Um, look at the offers they're making. Please don't steal people's stuff. Just, just curate, learn from it. Uh, stealing and, and taking other people's stuff that they worked hard for. That's not right, don't, don't do that. Um, but look, take, take, take value from it because it's, it's very, uh, very easy to learn from, right? From that, look at websites, look at Google, look at Yelp, are they on Groupon? Do they use HomeAdvisor? Who do they follow? Um, what videos do they watch on YouTube? Like who's their mentors? What books do they read? Know this type of information so you could be using this in your outreach, in your messaging, in your calls, in your uh, copy. It's very valuable. It's very, very valuable to know this. Take at least 30 minutes to 60 minutes to do this, at least. Now, the best market research, in my opinion, is to be very open and honest. Just call the five local companies near you. If you're concerned that if you call those local companies, you can't work with them, call five of the companies that are the farthest away from you geographically. Call them and say, hey, listen, I'm a student of marketing. I'm trying to go into the X niche, which is the person you're speaking to. I'm not here to sell you anything, I promise. I just have two questions so I can learn a little bit more. If you don't mind, I'm trying to create an impact. Some people will say no, other people say yeah, what's up? You say, well, what's the number one way you're generating new opportunities or sales or leads for your company? Write that down, know it. What's the number one obstacle you have about achieving your goals or hitting what you wanna go to? Now you know pain, you know what works, done. That's it, it's literally that simple, okay? So recapping three, number one, know the, the, the uh, specific pain uh, for a specific niche. Find a solution for that pain, make sure it's profitable, uh, dive, dive deeper into the avatar. Those are the three first things you have to do. Number four, okay, you have to be clear on a prospecting offer or a nurture offer. If you have watched or downloaded the perfect prospecting system that I've provided here in this group previously, then you know what this is. If you don't, ask for the PPS below, PPS, and I'll put it in here. Basically, prospecting offer simply uh, ads audit, website analysis, competitor analysis, something of value to them to get them to get on a call with you. 
in, in inbound systems for prospecting, that would be like a lead magnet, right? In outbound, it could be a video, a lead magnet, uh, whatever it is, right? Then the next piece is a nurture offer. Like, are you at full capacity? Uh, do you have, um, have you hit your quarterly goals? Um, do you feel comfortable with your revenue? Do you have enough time on your hands? Nurture offer, right? A question that sparks a conversation. Know those two things. Have one or the other or split test them. Be very confident in this because this is going to be your key to outreach success. Now, obviously, the prospecting offer and nurture offer comes after you're very well, very well aware, excuse me, of the customer avatar, of the pain point they have because you'll curate something that's valuable to them based off of that, right? Number five and finally, this is it. Curate or pay for a quality list of 30 to 50 prospects. 30 to 50. Not 300 to 500, 30 to 50. Qualified leads, people that you will follow up with, keep in touch with, create opportunity and get yeses or nos from. That's it. That's it. If you are way overwhelmed because you don't track, that's because you're reaching out to too many people. There is a reason that the money is in the follow-up. There is a reason that people have success. It's because they specialize, they niche down, they follow up, and they track. That's it. I'm telling you, there's no secret sauce here. I'm giving you everything, but you've got to actually implement this. You've got to implement it. Curate or pay for a quality list of 30 to 50 prospects, okay? I actually had one more thing I wanted to mention, and that's a sales pipeline. Use uh, PipeDrive, ActiveCampaign, HubSpot's free. Just have a simple sales pipeline that's able to track your leads and sales process so that you have like lead, no call booked, uh, lead call booked, uh, committed, not paid, um, proposal sent, uh, paid, upsell opportunity, something like that. Um, that's that's the process, okay? That's the process. Does anyone have any questions on this right now? Let me see here. I'm going through this. Okay, Trevor, I'll get you the PPS. I'll get you guys the PPS uh, later. Jerry, you definitely have it. <laughs> um, hold on. So you really need to find the pain points and solutions, both your client and your client. Um, so Michelle, uh, great question. That's an excellent question. Michelle asked, uh, do you really need to find the pain points and solutions for both your client, the business owner, and your client's client, the lead? So very, very good. Let me let me specify this for you. Michelle, if you're going to build the agency and have your own fulfillment team in-house, then yes, you need to know uh, the client's clients pain point right um, but you don't have to do that if you're outsourcing it because that's their job your job is to know how to do the prospecting and sales it's three core tenants to every business model prospecting leads coming in some call it marketing if you guys consider my, my business name is prospecting so give me a break I'm gonna I'm gonna say it's prospecting prospecting leads coming in Sales, converting those leads to clients. Fulfillment, servicing those clients with what you just sold them. The fulfillment, Michelle, is really relevant to the client's client's pain. I, there's got to be a better way for that than, than what we're saying here. But uh, it's, <laughs> you get the idea. Um, I hope that, hope that clarifies for you. All right. Um, uh, Tim, you can buy leads lists on Upwork and, and uh, online on groups like this. If you search, you, you'll find it. Um, all right, John, I'll get you the PPS, no worries. Guys, if you're enjoying this so far, throw a seven in the comment below. Let me know you're uh, enjoying this. I'm gonna recap the four methods, okay? I promise you guys I would give you the simple, simplest methods to get a new client in the next five days. This is the simplest methods. Four, current clients, previous leads, personal network, and then I gave you the entire strategy for new outreach. If you missed that, maybe like 20 minutes in here, go back on the replay, watch it again, all right? 15 probably to 20 minutes is where I went through that. Now you're gonna say, but, but Alex, you said you were going to tell me how to get new clients. This is all prep work. How do I get right? I get it. I, I know. Okay. I want you to do this right. So if you want to do this right, do the prep work I just told you. I'm going to break down these five things or six things quickly again. Biggest pain point and specific niche. Find a solution for the pain. Make sure it's profitable. Dive deeper into the avatar. Know your prospecting offer and nurture offer. And then curate a quality list, 30 to 50 prospects and use PipeDrive, ActiveCampaign, or HubSpot for a sales, sales CRM. That's the pre-work. Six, six things. It'll take maybe maybe one to three hours, depending on what, you, what, what it takes you, but that's really what it would be, okay? But it's more than worth it. If you follow this process, I'm creating you a yellow brick road right now. This is a surefire system. Keep this in mind. I didn't, I didn't start the, the video with like gloating about what I've done, because I did that with Andrew on the last video, but in the last year, 100 people that I've worked with using over 100, using this program, using this methodology, have grown a six-figure company, and 15 of them have grown a seven-figure company. You can do this. This is not hard. You just gotta follow through the process, all right? You gotta follow through the process. That's what it is, all right? Are you gonna be the minority that actually does it or the majority that listens to this and then goes into the weekend and doesn't do anything? 
Be real, all right? So if you do the prep work, then here's what you do on the outreach. Simple, effective, easy. Follow me. Make 10 personalized video audits with your prep work knowledge handy. Be authentic, share value, be there to create impact, and then be sure to frame it. In the front end, the 30 seconds, Hey there, my name is Alex Linsky. I'm from Prospecting On Demand. I was taking a look at your website. I was taking a look at your ads. I was taking a look at your LinkedIn. I was taking a look at your SEO, take whatever you're taking a look at. And I noticed a couple things that I think you would be uh, well advised to implement in order to create huge opportunity. I think there's massive opportunity costs that you're unaware of right now that's losing you revenue. I want to show you this video in 30 seconds, exactly what we can do. But I just wanted to frame for you why I'm here and why I'm here to help you. So I'm going to get started. I hope you find this valuable and go from there. Now, I'm not saying that frame was incredible or anything. I just did that off the cuff totally. But ultimately, you just need to frame it, basically explaining who you are, why you're there, what value you're going to bring, and kind of tease at the end, which I didn't just do. Like, at the end of this video, I'll show you how we can implement it for you, but I just want to show you so you can implement this yourself if you'd like to. That's usually the right method. Hopefully, that helps. 10 personalized audits. Easy. From the 30 to 50 prospects. Share the audit with their email with their Facebook page, with their Facebook business page, and on LinkedIn, really anywhere you can get it. Make it a cheeky note of like ensuring delivery. Like, hey, I messaged you via email, or I also reached out to you on Facebook, or I also reached out to you on LinkedIn. I just wanna make sure you get this because I think you'll find it really valuable. Let me know if you have any questions, we'll talk soon. Easy, done. Follow up with a phone call the day after to ensure they saw it. This is what I call a warm call. Like, hey, this is Alex from Prospecting On Demand. Did you see that video I sent over yesterday? Wanted to see if you had the opportunity to check it out and maybe we can book a call tomorrow so I can go through the process of how you can implement it, right? Valuable, easy booking calls. If you repeat these steps for your 50 prospects that are qualified and you follow through consistently, you will unquestionably book sales calls and close deals without question. Now there's methodology to automate this as I promised you could, meaning you could hire people to do the audits for you and then you just do the warm up calls or you can hire someone to do the warm up calls. And you can do the sales. This is all effective. I would strongly advise you do not automate this until you create some opportunity and figure out the right um, audit strategies. There's a couple other strategies, but I wanted to keep it simple for you today to implement, okay? 10 personalized audits, send it to their uh, carpet bomb them with their personalized email, Facebook, business page, LinkedIn, wherever you can. Follow up with a phone call the next day to set an appointment. Do not sell on that call. Follow up an appointment setting and then repeat the steps until you book calls and close deals. Right there, accomplish number one, as promised on this video. Let me know if everyone has enjoyed this, if this is making sense to you guys. And if you have any questions, holler, I'm here for you. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Chris, what's the hell of good idea? Share, that's awesome, I'm glad. Most effective lead magnet. Andrew, it's, there's no such thing as the most effective lead magnet for prospecting, it's related to the avatar. So like I'll tell you right now, if, if I was to say my lead magnet, the, person, the perfect prospecting system was the most valuable, and then I gave that to you, and then you sent that over to a real estate agent, would they find it as valuable as you? Probably not, because it's made and written for entrepreneurs and marketers, not real estate agents. Does that mean he can't find any value in it? No, of course they'll find value in it, but is it the most valuable? No. So the most effective lead magnet is relative to your audience, to the pain points, right? That makes sense? Hopefully that, uh, that, uh, that makes sense. All right, let's keep going here. The next thing I promised you was how to close out 2018 with momentum and scale your company to $10,000 in recurring revenue minimum. If you've been watching and just lurking, I want you to do at least this right now. Where are you at right now in recurring revenue and where do you wanna be? If you're uncomfortable sharing where, you, where you're at now, that's okay. At least tell me where you want to be in the next three months, by the end of the year basically. Where do you wanna be in the next 10 weeks? What's your goal? Tell me right now, please. I'm gonna show you how to close out 2018 with momentum and scale this company to $10,000 in recurring revenue, and I guarantee you can do it. You can get to $10,000 before the end of the year. Guaranteed. You can go into 2019 with momentum to have a six-figure business without question. So let me know where you're at, what you're trying to accomplish here. I'll make sure that I'm here to help you. Okay, shooting for 10K. Jerry, what are you shooting for? Alan, what are you shooting for? Chris, what are you shooting for? Madeline, what are you shooting for? Tim, Ravi, Michelle, John, what are you guys shooting for? Let me know. Okay, 15, 3, 10, K, 10. All right, everyone wants to get basically to 10, all right? So I'm telling you right now, in 10 weeks that you have remaining in this year, you can all get there if you follow the process I just told you and execute what I'm about to tell you again, all right? Hear me out, follow me here. I'm here to help you, I'm here to support you. I care about your growth, I care about you creating impact. Let's close out the year strong, okay? Let's close out the year strong. 
This is what we do. This is exactly what we do. First thing, it's gonna blow your mind. Look backwards. Look backwards. What does that mean, Alex? What am I saying? Look backwards. I go by a motto in my life that I live by. Winning or learning. A lot of the times in our business, we look at things as winning and failing, right? And a lot of the time we fail more than we win. Failure is a prerequisite to success. And that's kind of the mindset that we go with every day, even though we feel downtrodden and sick to our stomach and tired from so many no's. Well, I'd like you to consider changing that mindset to my mindset if it works for you. And that's the win or learn mindset. If you win, you get the desired result, you repeat that until the wheels fall off and often you keep winning. If you get a no, if you get a failure in your mind, consider that a learning experience. Okay, I went through a process. I wrote down and I executed a process in a systemized format and it didn't work the way I wanted to. I feel bad about it, I'm upset at myself, but overall, this is just one of the many thousands of opportunities I'm gonna have. What can I learn from this to ensure that I'd never make the same mistake again? Now, when I say never make the same mistake again, I wanna be uh, fair to you guys and acknowledge that as humans, you're probably gonna make mistakes at least two or three times before you really fix it. But how do we make sure that we close that gap and don't make those mistakes as soon, as many at times as possible or consistently happening over and over? By looking back, by looking back. Look back at the last 10 people you spoke to. Why did or did they not purchase from you? Look back at your 10 days in your calendar. What did you do that was effective and what were you doing that was wasting your time, right? Look back at the last quarter and identify whether or not your company went up or went down and why. What's the large trends? Take time to 80-20 your business model. Recognize that if you look back, that's actually the right step to move forward. I promise you if you implement this, it will make a huge difference in your life. Learn from the things that you've had experienced so you don't have to experience them multiple times over. The first thing to do is to learn, is to look back. What lessons are there for us? Stop running in circles. Stop running in circles and realizing that you can actually break through this pattern and create a new process if you just learn from it, all right? If you guys are gonna commit to that, throw a seven in the comments below, let me know, because I'm gonna help you get to $10,000 recurring if you do this. The next piece that I wanna bring up is understanding the two words that define successful entrepreneurs. A lot of people ask like, you know, what makes a successful entrepreneur? I wanna start, before I say the two words, that success is only determined by you. I mean you as in the person listening to this right now and listening to me taking time out of their day, their precious resource, listening to, the, to me right now, you determine success. Not me, not your friends, not your parents, not your colleagues, not your wife, no one other than you. You determine success. If success is for you to make $1,000 on the side in this business, amazing. If success is $100,000 in your business, great. You determine it. But what is the, the, the lowest common denominator for successful people? Two words, productivity, getting things done in a consistent and effective and efficient manner. Hear what I just said. Consistent, effective, and efficient. Consistent, you do it over and over and over and you track it. Efficient, it works and it's quick. Sorry, efficient is it's quick, right? Effective, it actually works. Consider those three words, okay? Very important. So productivity is the number one word that identifies successful people and successful entrepreneurs. The second word is perseverance. We were just talking about the winner learn mindset. The reality is you've probably had a lot more no's this year than yeses. That is 100% normal. I wanna tell you a quick metaphor here. I'm not a baseball fan, but it is the World Series, so what better time to use this metaphor than now? Did you know that baseball is over 200 years old, this sport? And that in the history of this sport, featuring the greatest athletes ever in the last 200 years playing this sport, not a single player has ever averaged a batting average, meaning they hit the ball more than they strike out or get out. No one has ever averaged more than 40% in one year. In fact, no one's even averaged 40. I think the highest in a career is like 39 or 38%. No one has ever averaged that, ever. Now in school, in the world that we live in, we're all taught that under 70% were failures. That's asinine. That's insane to think. The reality is there's a good chance that you clo your closing ratio and your actual outreach number to the people that work with you is a very small percentage. Very small. But that's fine. As long as you're winning and learning, optimizing and growing, you're going to be fine. 
Perseverance is part of the process. If you don't revel in the obstacles, meaning you don't look at them as challenges and opportunities to learn from, but you take them as actual personal affronts to yourself that you're not good enough, that you can't do it, that you can't accomplish it, you're missing the mark here. And you honestly shouldn't be an entrepreneur because it's just gonna get tougher. I want you to understand that when you get to $10,000, there's new obstacles ahead. That was something I didn't recognize early on, but there's new obstacles ahead. Revel in the obstacles. Life is not just a series of uh, getting to one mountain. Sorry, it is a series of getting to different mountain peaks and then going down and ascending. It's not just getting to one peak and staying there. That's not what this is. And if you can't handle going down sometimes and sometimes getting a no and sometimes learning rather than winning all the time, you shouldn't be in this. The reality is though, your life is gonna be like that. It's probably already been like that. In fact, I guarantee it's been like that. You can't tell me every single day you're always gonna win in every scenario. My request to you and your request to yourself should be this. Perseverance is, is actually someone that gets up even when it's hard, but most important, you give it your best. If you give it your best, you give it the good try, and you really work hard on this and you implement effectively and you do not give up and you do not let your mindset hold you back and limiting beliefs or people telling you to fuck off or people telling you you're not good enough, but you keep on pushing through and you keep on telling yourself you're capable and you keep on giving it your best, no matter what happens, you are a successful person. The money does not determine the success, guys. Putting in the work, even if it doesn't result in what you want, that is success. I'll tell you this right now, and it's a joke, but it's really true. I could have been playing basketball since I was five years old. There's a 0% chance I would have ever made it to the NBA. I could have given my all every single day. And even if I didn't make it to the NBA and gave it my all every single day, that would be success because I gave everything I had. So I'm going to ask you to commit to that. Give everything you had. I'm asking you to commit to two things back to back now, looking backwards, winning or learning, and then persevere. Give it your best. All right. Now I'm going to share with you my best advice to close out 2018 with momentum and scale your company to $10,000 in, re in recurring revenue. And I mean this sincerely and wholeheartedly and truly hire a mentor. Now it does not have to be me. While I'd love to work with you, absolutely. You need to hire a mentor. You don't need to buy another course. You do not need more information. I'm giving you information that's well worth over $10,000 on this call alone. You do not need to buy another course. That information overload, that shiny object syndrome, that lack of productivity, the inability to identify what you need to do to not have clarity, you're not stepping in the right direction, you're going in sideways rather than forwards, don't buy another course. You need to buy or hire, not buy, you need to hire and invest in a mentor. Learn from someone that has been in your shoes before. Someone that has broken that cycle, the freelancer's trap cycle, and achieved what you want to achieve. If that's me, fantastic. I'd love to work with you. I'd love to help you. I'm an impact-driven entrepreneur here to help people create businesses of your dreams. That's what I'm about. But it doesn't have to be me. You can go hire anyone. There's a lot of really quality mentors out there, people that will resonate with you and help you. Do not be afraid. And if you have a lump in your throat right now about investing in a mentorship, consider what your clients feel when you're asking them to invest two to $3,000 a month to work with you. Think about that. Are you willing to put your money where your mouth is to learn and grow your company? Because that's what you're selling. Think about it, all right? Think about it. Now, the last thing I'll say about how to close out 2018 with momentum and scale your company to $10,000 in recurring, to get to 10K specifically, stop taking every dollar for anything. I'm gonna say that again. Stop taking every dollar for anything. Stop taking every dollar for anything. You do not offer every service under the sun. I used to do this all the time. I'm just gonna figure it out, I'm gonna get paid, and then I'll figure it out. That's what we call the freelancer's trap. Running in circles, never figuring out what to do because you're recreating the wheel every single time, and you're firefighting all day, you cannot retain clients, you have no systems, no effectiveness, and there's no business. It's just you, running, like crazy. Sometimes making money, and sometimes not. If that's you, throw a seven in the comments below. Let me know if you've been doing that. Let me know if you've been doing that. Stop taking every dollar for anything. Be the vessel, not the water. This is the most important metaphor I'm gonna to bring to the table today. Be the vessel, not the water. The water can move into different vessels. That's what you've been doing. Oh, SEO? Oh, PPC? Oh, business consulting? Oh, uh, ads on a platform I've never used? 
oh, in-person meetings? You just keep pouring that water out into different vessels rather than this is my vessel. This is what my company does. I offer X. You are the water. Now, you can be a little malleable at times, but you need to be the vessel, not the water. If you're going to commit to that, write vessel in the comments below. Let me know that you're going to commit to that. No more water. Commit to being the vessel. All right? The next thing I'm going to tell you is to specialize and focus. I already mentioned this before, so I'm not going to go back into it again, but specialize and focus and realize how easy it is to get to $10,000, okay? If you have five clients at $2,000, you're already there. You have 10 clients, obviously, at $1,000, you're already there. You have seven clients or six and a half, basically, at $1,500, you're there. This is not rocket science. There is literally hundreds of thousands of millions of business owners that need your services and help. I'm telling you to find five of them at $2,000 or 10 of them at $1,000 or seven of them at $1,500. You're telling me you can't do that with all you've learned and all the knowledge that I bring bringing to the table here for about 40 minutes? Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. I believe in you. I know you can do it. I've seen it myself. I've done it myself. I've helped hundreds of people do it. You can do this. Simple as that. Now, the third thing I promise you is how to get off the freelancer's treadmill, break the cycle of information overload, and stop scaling your and start, excuse me, scaling your business now. And I covered those in the first two. So that wraps up my training for today. I sincerely hope you enjoyed that. If you did, let me know in the comments below. I would re really appreciate it. Any feedback or questions you have, I'm always open to. I love hearing what you guys think about these processes. Um, let me peel the curtain back for you now to get really detailed. I think this will be very valuable, and then I'll answer any questions you have. Why do you think I come on here and I share value for like 40 minutes or so? Why? There's a couple reasons, okay? But I, I just wanna know why you believe I come on here and share value and why Andrew brings on people and we share value and we grow together. I just would like to, to have an idea of what you guys think. Because I'm gonna peel the curtain back, I'm gonna go Deadpool here for a second, I'm gonna break the fourth wall for you. I've got nothing to hide. I'm a very straight shooter and transparent person and I know you can learn from this if I tell you. But why do you think I'm here? Why do you think I'm on this call? Let me break it down for you, okay? Number one, I'm an impact-driven entrepreneur and purpose-driven entrepreneur. If anyone here today, the 60, 70, 100 people that have watched it, 150 comments, amazing, anyone that watched this, that goes out and implements this strategy and creates revenue for themselves, I now have indirectly impacted yourself, your, your clients, you, your family, and many, many other things down that pipeline, and that matters to me. That every day that I do something that matters, that I have an impact in the world, that's why I do this, number one. That's always number one for me, 100%. Now let's talk about the next step. What was I talking about throughout this conversation, right? Knowing your avatar, knowing where and when to reach out, knowing the offers. So is it possible that this entire call where you've all been staying on here for 40 minutes, giving me your most precious asset, your time, it's because I resonated with you, right? Because I shared value with you, because things that I were saying were you were saying to yourself, Hey, that, that's me, I, I've experienced that, right? If you threw a seven in the comment below, that means you resonated at some point. What does that mean that I'm doing? I know my avatar. I know what the avatar needs. I know the offer that I can make that's irresistible because I know what you need and what to do to help you get there, right? So when I get on here, my thought process is share value, create opportunity for ourselves and for you, and we grow together. This is a prospecting method as well. You can do this too. You can go in niche groups related to your niche and share value just like I am today. You can break the fourth wall if you want to. This is my style, but you can do that if you want. But that's the process here. And I hope that makes sense to you. I hope you understand where I'm coming from with this process and why we do this and what you should be doing to grow your company. I hope you found this valuable. If you enjoyed this call today, let me know in the comments below. I'm going to stick around for a couple more minutes. If you have any questions, feel free to let me know. If you'd like to work with me, uh, feel free uh, to friend me and we can have a conversation. Uh, my team and I will definitely be in touch with you for sure. You can bet on it. Um, and we're here to help. That's what it's all about. If you want the PPS as well, the perfect prospecting system, throw the comments below. If you want me to cover anything else at a different time on this group, I'm here for you. Sales, hiring, whatever. I've got you guys covered. Really enjoyed today. Hope you guys had a lot of fun. I love doing this, my favorite thing. Um, so I ha hope everyone had a great time here um, and uh, we'll go from there, okay? I'm gonna see if there's any uh, questions. <sighs> Michael, you did miss that. I went through it. Um, I went through that basically the first 25 minutes of the of this call. ba 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 Thank you, Suman. Thank you, Jocelyn. Thank you, Jerry, Forrest. Appreciate you guys dropping bombs. 
Yep. Very important. Yeah, Jerry, how can you ask others to invest in you if you want to invest in yourself? 100% critical. Absolutely critical. If you guys have any questions, throw it in below. I'm here to answer anything. Uh, I do have some questions that people have asked before. I'm going to answer them directly, but I uh, just want to see if anyone has any questions that's on the call right now. I'm going backwards to see. All right, Larissa, you asked a couple minutes back, is there a particular sequence of questions or topic you go through to pre-frame a prospect when you get on a call to optimize the conversation and actually get more clients? Yes, uh, Larissa, absolutely. So my process is as follows. I take a value-based approach like this, for example, right? Um, always, always have something of value, whether it's a video, whether it's a lead magnet, whether on the call you're doing an audit. That's how I usually go through the process and my recommendation is you take your prospecting offer and whatever that is, whether it's a competitor analysis or website audit or whatever it is, the first 10 minutes of your call, you frame and you say this. Hey, uh, so excited to speak with you today, Brad. We're going to chat for about 45 minutes. The first 10 minutes of the call, I'm going to break down this offer, this prospecting offer, which you would say the name. So let's say competitor analysis. Uh, in the first 10 minutes of the call, I'm going to break down my... Um, the uh, marketing audit I did for you. And I think you'd find this really valuable. I'm excited to show you. At any time, you can ask me any questions you like. Once I'm done with the marketing audit, I'm gonna show you how we could potentially implement this for you. I'm gonna ask you some questions. If there's an opportunity for us to work together and grow together, of course, I'll invite you to do so. And if not, I'll try to point you in the right direction and give you the best advice I can. Sound fair? Everyone's gonna say sounds fair. Now you have a frame, they committed to be willing to hear your offer and now you can provide value up front, show your expertise, show them what you know about their industry and boom, it's a lot easier to sell. Hopefully that helps Larissa. All right, let's keep going here. Just seeing if there's any questions. Ba -ba -bum. Right, good stuff here guys. All right, it's stopping me from going any higher. So if you have any questions, let me know. Um, yeah, no worries Enrique. What's the best way to choose your own niche? Robbie, the best way is fo as follows, two things. Number one, um, what are you passionate about? What do you, what do you wanna create an impact for? Like the reason why I believe I'm successful uh, in this industry and like creating impact for people like yourself is because I do care. Like I do wanna see people that are entrepreneurs succeed and create the life that they wanna create because of what myself and my business partner and life partner, Shira Schlinsky, have created. You know, I'm, I'm really proud of that. Uh, and we worked really hard for that. The way that I, I figured it out was that we were entrepreneurs, marketers, and it was really, really hard. Then we figured out how to achieve it. Um, and from there, it was really easy for me to identify, man, I, I wanna move into this space. Like, this is what I'm very passionate about. In the beginning, it's, it's hard for some people to identify what they're passionate about. Find something that really means something to you. Don't leverage your ability to grow a company based on I wanna make money. It's I wanna make impact. Like, how can I create a difference for someone that allows me to feel good about myself, allows me to leverage that in my conversations, and then also allows me to grow my own company through financial growth as well. That's usually my recommendation. I have a training for uh, the top 10 niches, Ravi. After the call, I'll, I'll link it for you as well. Um, but yeah, that, that would be my recommendation. I hope that, hope that helps. Um, if anyone else has any other questions, throw it in the comments below. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna spend the next 10 minutes going through the ones that I see uh, were asked um, last week. I'm gonna share some of the ones that I really liked, okay? This was from Rins Yanez. I'm sorry if I screw up the names, my apologies. Uh, it says, how do you show the value of your services so it becomes a no-brainer? This is really what I was talking about before about knowing your customer avatar, feeling confident in that process, knowing what it takes, right? Knowing what it takes to help them overcome their problem is how you show the solution in your services. I personally like to have sales calls with um, video so I can show like a uh, pitch deck. I think that's a really easy way to have it become a no brainer. Some people kind of lose it when you're on the phone without the visual aid. That's my recommendation. Um, what does your 30 second pitch sound like was a question from her. I wasn't sure if the 30 second pitch was a sales pitch or was it a a pitch on like a, like a uh, like a elevator pitch. So I'll give you the elevator pitch, um, which is basically like, hey, I'm Alex Shunsky. Uh, I work with entrepreneurs and marketers specifically to help them create financial growth and time freedom, utilizing effective systems for their business to grow a company to ten thousand, fifty thousand, eighty four thousand dollars a month, and more. That's kind of my 30 second elevator pitch. Um, simple, easy to the point, um, but that's my process. On a sales offer, definitely not 30 seconds. So hopefully that helps. Um, next question was from Ryan Kulesa. Uh, looking forward to it, man. I could use some pointers for knowing when to transition from dropping value to closing the deal. So the big thing here is, I'm guessing you're asking on a sales call. So my recommendation on a sales call is to ask, like, uh, do you, did you find value in what we're talking about right now? Do you have any questions about that, right? Like you're, you're framing it and closing it off with that question. Then you ask this question. Like, do you want my help based on what I'm telling you? 
Once they confirm they want your help, now they've confirmed that they do want to hear your offer, now you make the offer. Hope that helps. Let me see if there's any other questions here. Okay, again, if anyone has any other questions, throw it in the comments below. If you enjoyed this and you're hopping off, throw a seven in the, seven? Yeah, seven in the comments below. Let me know you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know also if you want your biggest takeaway. What was the biggest takeaway for you? Yeah, instead of the sevens, let me know your biggest takeaway. Let's, let's hear it because then some people that come back and watch the replay can uh, take a look at the bottom and, and go from there, right? I'm going to end with this. Uh, if you guys want to work with me, uh, I'm going to make an offer to everyone here in Andrew's group uh, to be able to book a system assessment with me, but I'm going to be very frank with you. If you don't have any clients yet, if you don't have three to $5,000 in recurring revenue, please don't book the call right now. I won't be able to help you yet, but I will be able to send you over the webinar link, which will help you. It will uh, give you opportunity to join POD if you want. You don't have to, but I just wanted to make that offer for you so you know it. But I will put in the link here right now below, um, which is to book a call with me. Um, I am gonna be out of, nah, never mind. You can book a call. Just book the call uh, when you find it uh, fit for you, and we'll go from there. And again, please, uh, so that I can really benefit you, Make sure you want to get the $10,000, make sure you're interested in mentorship, and make sure that you're at like three to $5,000 in revenue um, so that I can really help you. If not, no, no harm, no foul. Uh, I'll shoot you over a message with prospecting on demand uh, if that will help you, but I just wanted to bring that up uh, before we hopped off here, okay? Um, let's see. Haha, <laughs> what's up, Andrew? Good to see you, bro. Um, the replay is going to be hosted right here, guy, uh, in the group, all right? Um, all right. Does anyone else have any other questions? Oh, nice, Ryan. I'm glad you were here uh, so that I can answer the question live. Sweet. That's dope. Good work. All right. Let me answer. I have, uh, I think, three more questions here. Uh, I have three more questions. I've got seven more minutes. So that's the opportunity. Let me know if you have uh, any questions for me. All right. Uh, number one, we hear Eduardo Ruiz. How do I handle customer service post-sale and how do I possibly automate that part of the agency? So this is like an entire another video itself, but I just want to answer this uh, briefly. Um, how do I handle customer service post-sale? You need to know what you want to do in this company, Eduardo. If you are very effective in sales, be the salesperson and probably in the beginning prospecting. But if you don't want to handle post-sale, then you have two choices. One is your company going to be an outsourced company or is your company going to be an in-house company? If you wanna make it an outsourced company, then you have to hire a white label agency and then hire a manager that's project success. Make sure you have a communication schedule that's an automation to send them retention emails like, hey, here's what's up. Uh, here's a, um, a piece of value that we thought would be valuable to you. Here's a personalized video so you can hear an update from us. Like have a sequence of retention emails to keep them in the green uh, and keep them satisfied and automate that through something like Active Campaign. Hopefully that helps. Uh, Timothy Williams, he said, my question would be geared towards scaling pertaining to sourcing projects. What do you use? Or are you all in house? So like I just said, um, sourcing projects, in my opinion, is best uh, with larger agencies, not individual contractors, nothing against individual contractors, just they're freelancers as well. It's hard to rely upon. And if they go down or can't do the job, you don't have someone to back you up. So that would be my recommendation. Um, I do not do it in house. I did it in house for about six months of my agency, which was the worst six months of my life. I would never do that again. Plenty of my students do do it in house, their fulfillment and they have good success. Um, but I coach mostly on the, on the outsource portion. Um, so Seppo asked another question. Uh, could you cover the systems you have in your business? Like what a day in the life looks like from prospecting to fulfillment and tools. So I'll go through this briefly. I think this is really valuable for you. In the morning, I do a routine, a morning routine uh, for about an hour. I do a workout. I do a walk. I listen to music and then a podcast, something totally unrelated to business. Um, so I can just get in my zone of, of enjoyment for the morning. Uh, I really strongly believe that having a good morning is a great way to have a great day. Um, it's just proven so many times in studies and my own my own personal um, uh, reactions to to what it is like when I have a good morning and how the rest of the day uh, ends up. Um, after that, usually from nine to eleven or nine to ten, I'm doing uh, client fulfillment because I have a mastermind group on Slack uh, where people are asking questions and we have like a community. Um, this is what we call prospecting on demand elite. Um, and if anyone books the call with me, that's probably what we'd be talking about. Um, so I do that for about an hour to to two hours. Um, then from there. Uh, my team is also in Slack and they, they help as well. What I personally do from there um, is I have a prioritized calendar from the day before to make sure that I have implementing time for in the business work, like SOPs and stuff, or sorry, in the business would be client fulfillment. Um, on the business work, which is like uh, doing sales calls or doing um, uh, like SOP development, standard operating procedures, 
uh, processes, making videos, writing content, all that stuff that, that allows me to grow my business, uh, and then having time as well for in the business activities like client fulfillment, um, and uh, sometimes people call sales in the business, it's, it's in between for me, so it doesn't really make a difference. Um, other tools that I use, uh, we use Asana for a lot of project management, super valuable, also all of our program details so that my coaches know exactly what they're coaching uh, is all in um, Asana as well, which is great, I love Asana. Um, we use pipe, uh, active campaign for our automations and, and, um, retention model as well. Uh, what else do I use? Those are basically the SOPs. Um, in POD elite, I provide you with 30 plus SOPs from hiring process, uh, productivity, um, prospecting sales, um, uh, CEO management, uh, everything you're going to need, uh, is provided for you in, in uh, prospecting on demand elite. So if you're interested in that, uh, feel free to book a call and we, we could talk about it. We would love to help you. Uh, no worries. Um, Okay, let's see here. Does anyone else have any questions? All right. Uh, George, I'll comment um, the uh, PPS link uh, when, when I get off here. Oh, sure did already. There you go. What's up, Simon? Good to see you. All right, Ryan, I think you're going to be the last question here unless someone else pulls in a, a midnight uh, a midnight question. Hope everyone enjoyed this. Again, if you did enjoy this, let me know your biggest takeaway in the in the uh, comments below. It will help me provide for you more as I make more trainings to maybe go more in depth on one specific topic. Hope you found this super valuable. Uh, Ryan, where and how do you send personalized videos to prospects? I use Loom and I've been sending on Facebook. Yeah, so I do use Loom as well. Uh, I like Loom because it tracks, which is awesome. Um, how do I send them? Uh, so I have my VA send them if I was doing personalized videos. If you were doing it, just do it manually. And then I send them to every platform with being a little cheeky. Like, hey, like I sent you over here and there. I just wanna make sure you got it. So wherever you answer me, that's where I'll stay in touch with you. All right? All right, guys, I think that does it. I think that just about wraps it up. Hope everyone had an amazing time today. Uh, I love doing this, my favorite thing. Uh, hopefully, uh, we'll have a couple people book some calls with me so I can help you grow your company and close out 2018 strong. If not, hopefully you take the advice that I gave you here today and still take action and create some opportunities for yourself. I'm here for you, we're here to support you. If you need us, reach out to me. If you need to reach out to me uh, via Facebook, that's no worries as well. Feel free to friend me um, and we can start from there. Uh, I will definitely be back in here sharing more value uh, in the coming weeks. Uh, I'm gonna let this one soak a little bit for you guys, but I promise you I will be back soon sharing more value. Probably the next one will be sales. Um, probably go deep into sales, one of my favorite comments uh, and topics, uh, and we'll talk soon, all right? Have a good one, guys.